He says here that by these, these what? These precious promises, exceeding great and precious promises, you might be partakers of the divine nature. So here he tells us that, and I, I want you to get this. This is a focus on this, all right? This is really more teaching than preaching per se. <clears throat> he says that by these exceeding great and precious promises, we become partakers of his divine nature. So that means that we have promises. In other words, we don't just have his divine nature, but it is by these promises, words written in a book, that we can take those promises. Because, see, it's a promise until it's yours. In other words, it's a promise while it's in the book. But when you take it out of the book, put it in your life, and do it, now that promise becomes reality. See, a promise is always future. A promise is never current. That, does that make sense? Because yeah. if it was current, then it wouldn't be a promise anymore. It'd be what you have. And so the idea is that he gave us this book that has all these exceeding great and precious promises, amazing promises. I mean, just it's just loaded with promises. Basically, the whole book is promises that tells us if you do this, this is the effect it will have in your life. So we can take these promises and put them into our life. And when you put them into your life, you actually, you're, and I don't like to use the word activate in that sense, but it's as if you're activating that essence. Um, we would say like in, in the DNA, it's activating that gene. See, when you were born again, you were recreated perfect and complete in him. So you have his DNA, right? His spiritual DNA, you have that in you. And whenever you do something, in other words, whenever you read, uh, believers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, there's a lot more promises, please. I'm just using these because it has to do with an action. And so when he says, believers lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, then the moment you start to lay hands on the sick, you have activated that gene in you. And now it's working. Do you get that? So how do you get these promises to work? Well, just like a promise would be a seed, you have to plant it, but then you have to water it and you have to nourish it and all that kind of stuff. And the way you do that simply is by finding it in the Word and then acting upon it as though it's true. Now, in the beginning, it may be a little slow in coming because you're not, you know, when you start gardening, you may not be the best gardener, <clears throat> Right? And you may have other seed coming in. But whenever you focus and you decide to have that seed, then you start eliminating the other seed. Now, the number one, uh, we know that the Bible is the Word of God. We know that the Word of God is a seed, and it's incorruptible seed, and it's how we're born again. But we have to remember the Bible is the Word of God, and the Word of God is the seed, and the sower goes out to sow the seed. And he, the seed he sowed was the word of God, right? So this word is, these promises are the seed. They're, they're seed and they're promises as long as they're in the book. But once you take them out of the book and you put the seed into the soil of your heart, of your life, now that thing starts to grow. You can read, by his stripes you were healed, the rest of your life and die sick. But at some point, you're going to have to say, you know what? I believe that. Now, here's the beauty of it. I want to read this to you. I was going to read it a little bit later on. I'll read it now. And then we'll come back to the scriptures here. Okay. Here's what I want you to remember. Right? You might want to write these two things down. Two or three things. <laughs> so, number one, God... Now, look, I'm, I'm going to catch flack on this for, from religious people that don't like this, but the fact is it's true. God cannot say no to what he's already said yes to. Right. That's right. Because he cannot change the thing that comes out of his mouth. Amen. Amen? Amen? So if God cannot say no to what he's already said yes to, then there is no, there, there's no no from God concerning the promises of God. Amen. Do, do you get that? Yes. Now watch. God can't say no to a promise that you decide to believe and act upon. That's what you need to write down. God cannot say no to a promise 
that you decide to believe and act upon. 